Let's imagine that that introduction was different. I would ask you to think of the worst thing that you can think of. I want you to kind of close your eyes, and I want you to look down at the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to introduce to you today an old white man. <laughs> a heterogeneous male. A general. To make it worse, a marine general. Hoorah. <laughs> a cop and somebody who's doing work in intelligence. Imagine if that were the introduction you just had. How many here genuinely, you're in a, faith, in a room where, where God is presumably a little closer, generally might have had a slightly different perspective on the speaker had that been the introduction? Right. Both introductions are true. But you chose to think about them differently. Not you personally, but we as a human being. Chose to think about them differently. But they are both true. So with that in mind, let me have a chance to uh, talk about a couple things and say, what if I had been introduced as, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to introduce Doug Stone, a son of Abraham. We're probably all still on the same sheet. And then if I were to walk up and say, Shalom, where would you go? Right. What if I walked up and said, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to introduce the son of Abraham. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah? Or what if I walked up and somebody said, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to introduce a son of Abraham, Doug Stone, and I go, peace, brother. All of those are kind of true, right? <laughs> Not as true, but kind of true. So let's be honest with ourselves when we think about this very important topic of bias. We'll just use the kind word. Uh, because let's not point the other finger when in fact to do so is to point four of them back at ourselves. And let's not be quick to judge on things that, frankly, are quite important. Now, I have raised, uh, my wife and I have raised uh, two daughters. Neither one is particularly biased on anything that I'm aware of. And uh, on occasion, I take them to downtown Sacramento. Not because I want my grandchildren to know this, but I want to make sure that they know this. And as we're walking down, without my badge, without being in uniform, Large black guys with a lot of bling are walking towards us. And instead of getting off the sidewalk, which is what my daughters would naturally do, we walk up to them. And I say, hello, how you doing? And for a moment, they do pretty much the same thing you did. It's the son of Abraham, Shalom. And they sort of, well, but within 10 seconds, we're having a conversation. Within 20 seconds, I know where the store that I want to go to is. And literally, within 30 seconds, nobody has been raped or beaten up. As hard as that is to believe, that is actually the case. Why do I do that? I do it for the same reason with my own family that we need to do that kind of thing in our communities. Uh, because, and let's get to the first slide. And I'm up here presumably to be at the same level as the slides. Because there are at least a few principles that I need you and I to understand from my perspective. The first one is that it is our job in the interfaith business, it is our job in government service, commercial business, elsewhere, to work to enhance trust in our partnership. Not easy. You and I didn't trust each other on many of those introductions. You immediately said, I am not trusting this guy. Until I said, well, but they're all the same. Then we met, no, no, I, then I didn't trust the black guy when I walked up to him. I don't trust Al-Qaeda when I meet with him one-on-one. -on -one. But why? Because I have a human survival instinct. 
And it's important for you in a world of spirituality to recognize the very human component of who you are. You have a survival instinct. So when you walk up, you want to walk away. But let's not move the survival instinct to a spiritual instinct. And if we cross over that, the first point is vital, that we learn to establish trusting partnerships. By trust, I want to quote my wife, a counseling psychologist. Today, I want you to know I love you, but I really don't like you. <laughs> now, that used to hurt me, okay? I think, what do you mean? You love me, but you don't like me? But I've never heard my wife say, you know what? I like you. I don't like you. I like you. And never follow it with, and I don't love you. Ever. And I don't remember doing that once with anybody, Al-Qaeda, Daesh members. I don't remember doing it to anybody. Because I've been taught in a mixed world, my mother Roman Catholic, my father American Indian, to essentially respect everything that is alive. So it's a lot of things I don't like. But to be brutally honest, there's very little I don't love. Second point, that we need to engage them all on issues that are common to all of us, in this case, public safety. And that we need to engage not just them, or they, or the government, or the religion, or the rabbi, or the, or the, or the, but all of us. And that if we utilize these partnerships, and I'm going to show you what we, what's been done in L.A. at the very end of this, what we have overcome in L.A., I'm going to show you by building partnerships to counter violent extremism. And I want to make sure that you understand there is no middle ground on this. Everybody gets trained. Not just you, not just your children, not just your leadership, not just your sub-leadership, everybody. There's no room for everybody to not be engaged on the topic. When I do that, do the next slide. <laughs> so, so today we're going to hear some stories, and I'm going to try to move through them quickly because we did start a little late, but it's a lot of material. And for that, I apologize. But I have been war fighting in Pakistan and Iraq and Afghanistan a lot of time, 40 some months, I think. Um, I have been working with a lot of Muslim nations, 30 or so. I still work with them. I just came from a very Christian, very Catholic nation, um, Malta, just three or four days ago. And I'm on my way to Indonesia, to Jakarta, to deal with a very threatening issue. So and then I'll be in Morocco, and the list goes on. You'll see some of the work that we're doing. Um, and, but of course, I also work in the police department, and I also work in the, in the Council, the Fusion Center, which is an FBI intelligence center. This is the world, and this is the world that we live in. We don't have another world to live in. I left Antarctica off quite a bit, but for that I apologize. There are some valuable little penguins down there that are cool. But I mean, in principle, this is our world. And for many of you, I'm sure you have, you're from elements and you've traveled to them. But I have, I, I don't know, I, I, 70, 80 nations, maybe something like that. The more I go, the more I like my own bed sleeping next to my own wife, and the more that I realize how small uh, the world is and how many commonalities we have amongst the same issues. And another bias that I would have said in my earlier introduction is, I have sworn to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and, in this case, the state of California. And what I am opposed to and what I have killed for and what I have sacrificed, nearly sacrificed my life multiple times, is to ensure that innocents are not taken advantage of, that the rule of law is not inappropriately applied to them, that their life might be removed because somebody else made that choice. That is why I fight. It's why at my should have already been retired age, I went to the police academy, the oldest guy I think in California to do that. Imagine 56, 20 year olds and me in formation. <laughs> I was 20 years older than my teachers. So it's a small world and we'll come back to that in another, another way in a second. 
I want to show you some friends of mine. I put these uh, individuals together for a training course, and I wanted them, I wanted to introduce you to them. They're all deep and uh, close friends, and I have lots of videotapes about them um, and lots of things. But I want you to hear from them a little bit about how they think of radicalization. And then we're going to end with the only other video. We don't have time for the other ones that I would like to show today. So we've sort of just picked these two out. So let's go ahead and see if we can play this.